I'd like to call to order the Tuesday, June 20th, 2023 meeting of the Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors. Are we certified in compliance with the open meeting law? Yes, it was posted on June 16th at 3 p.m. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Next is roll call. There are 22 supervisors present. Next is the approval of the May 16th, 2023 journal. Supervisor Wagner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move for approval of the journal. Thank you, Supervisor Wagner. Supervisor Brower. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Brower. Is there any discussions? Seeing none, please vote. It is unanimous. Next is consideration of appointments by county administrator. To the Sheboygan County Industrial Development and Revolving Loan Agency Incorporated, appointments Alan Mayer and Thomas Ryle, reappointments Donald Hammond and Don Tom Brickley. Supervisor Brower. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will make the motion to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Brower. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Under discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote. And that is unanimous also. Next is presentation. Uh, Aaron Brault, Planning and Conservation Updates. All right, good evening everybody. So the last couple of years, you've heard me talk about Amsterdam Dunes, so I thought I'd change it up tonight a little bit. So <laughs> I'm going to go over hazardous waste, our household hazardous waste program, talk a little bit about Gerber Lake and some of the recent stuff we've done out there, and then I'll pretty much just show you some pictures of what's going on out, out at the, the Marsh Dam. And I'm told the clicker may not be working all that well. So is it not working? Here, here's my Oops. wink, Cheryl. There we go. Yep, keep, keep it going. So our hazardous waste, you know, I don't know in other departments, but at least in our department, this is a program that makes you guys look good. I, I can't tell you how many thank yous we get. I mean, nearly everybody coming through the line, you know, is very thankful that they have a, a place to go uh, with this type of material. So since the 90s, we've been doing this collection. I think 98 it started. Um, our budget is typically about $110,000, and then we get a little extra uh, revenue from the state. We apply with Manitowoc and Fond du Lac counties in what's known as a clean sweep grant, uh, and that varies every year, but it's usually between 10 and 15. So all in, probably 115 or uh, 125, 130,000 each year is what we budget on this. Um, and that usually guarantees us about three events, and the fourth event is usually budget dependent on whether we hold that one in September or not. Um, so since 01, uh, we're nearing uh, roughly two million pounds of hazardous waste that we've collected. Um, in 15, we started to accept electronics. Um, and then since 15, we're well over one million pounds of electronics. 
And one of the questions we ask when people come through the line is, and, and that's how we determine the fee they pay as well, do you have hazardous waste, hazardous waste and electronics, or just electronics? And it's usually the breakdown is consistently a third, a third, a third. So a third of people are just doing hazardous waste, a third of people are doing just electronics, and then a third are bringing both in. So um, some of our events have been very popular during COVID when everybody was sitting at home and cleaning out the, the garage and the basement. And the, the, the sheriff was in line and he can attest to this. We were backing cars up. We, the event was at Maywood and cars were starting to back up on I-43. So it was, that was a big one. But typically our bigger events are at the Southside Shed, Maywood, and then out at the Plymouth Shed. And we usually figure about 300 cars for those events. So, um, so I thought maybe I'd touch on what are some of the, the top nasty things that we get. And I'll probably butcher the, uh, the pronunciation on these, but pentachlorophenol, nitric acid, hydrofluoric acid, and then concentrated hydrogen peroxide for some reason. Uh, so Veolia is the contractor we use, and I asked him, you know, what are the top four sort of oddball, nasty things we get, and this is what they are. So pentachlorophenol, you know, you see that on a lot of old um, uh, utility poles. That was a biocide to try to keep the critters and stuff from eating the wood. Um, from a toxicity, you know, it's ex all this stuff is extremely toxic to humans. Uh, so this stuff does respiratory, blood, kidney, liver, immune system, eyes, nose, and skin issues. Um, then the next, nitric acid. Uh, we usually we get that primarily from the egg community. Uh, that's used in in fertilizer. Um, that's also extremely toxic. I'm, I'm not going to go through each one, but um, you know, it causes some nasty things to happen. Um, next, hydrofluoric acid. Uh, we get that uh, primarily through refrigerants and fluorescence, um, and that can cause burns if, if you touch it. Uh, and, and that one sort of, you may not realize it, that one takes a good 12 to 24 hours before it starts showing its signs. So you may have touched it and not know for you know, a couple hours down, down the road. And then again, I don't know why people are buying concentrated uh, hydrogen peroxide, but uh, you can get it online. You know, I took this picture, DIY chemicals, that's 30%. Um, you know, the stuff you buy in the little brown bottle at Walmart or wherever, you know, that's usually about, I think, one and a half, two percent. But people are, for some reason, are buying concentrated. Um, and that can be used as explosives. Uh, I don't know if people are using it as a propellant or, or what, but, I don't, or if people are cheap and want to dilute it themselves, I don't know. But, those are sort of the top four things that we get that, you know, are oddball and, and, like I said, can do some damage. Some of the really weird things that we've got in the last couple years, I'm not old enough to know what Mercura chrome is, but apparently that's an old antise antiseptic that people used to use. Um, <laughs> that explains a lot, huh? <laughs> so do you... <laughs> <laughs> um, so we get that, you know, mercury's no good. Sodium arsenite, uh, that's an old pesticide. Potassium cyanide, and I think these are the coolest things when people bring the, these in. That's that uh, uh, red bulb in the middle there. That was an old fire suppressant. People would have those on their walls, or commercial buildings would have that in their wall, on their wall. And if a fire started, you would chuck it on the fire, and it starves it from oxygen and puts the fire out. But it's, it's nasty stuff. Um, potassium cyanide, we, that's a picture, I think we got that last year, the year before that little bottle there. Carbon tetrachloride, that's, oh, that's the, that's the fire suppressor, I'm sorry. The potassium cyanide is a, a photography when people used to have their own dark rooms. And then DDT, that was banned 50 years ago, and, and every year we still get DDT. So they're cleaning out grandpa's barn or whatnot, and, and we still get that. A um, couple of the other weird things, I had an older gentleman bring in a cur jar full of liquid mercury, and I said, he asked if we would take it, and I said, yes, absolutely, we'll take that. But my first question was, why the heck do you have a, a cur jar full, full of liquid mercury? And he was doing the right thing. He was taking old thermometers and old thermostats that had mercury in and, and keeping it, and 
and disposing of it. Um, somebody asked if we would take nine tons of glycerin, and I said, well, I'll have to get back to you on that. But he, I asked him, I said, why do you have it? And apparently that's a, a, a byproduct of creating your own biodiesel fuel. Turns out it's not toxic. I told him to start making soap. That's one of the main ingredients in soap. So, so yeah, we get, we get some weird stuff every year. Uh, the last one that we did, uh, I think last weekend, uh, we had, um, uh, it's an old farm chemical. Uh, anyways, we get weird stuff every year. So, all right, moving on. So this is sort of a map, you, you know, to try to keep folks honest, we ask them what their zip code is. We've only had to turn away two people, at least in the 13, 14 years that I've been doing it now. One for Manitowoc County, one for Mozaki County. So it's a Sheboygan County only thing. Um, and this is sort of the, a breakdown of the zip codes where people are coming from. Obviously, city of Sheboygan and, and the urbanized areas, Plymouth and Falls and Howard see, uh, you know, the largest um, folks coming through. All right, next. All right, so moving on to Gerber Lake. I'll just talk a little bit about that. Um, if you want to move to the next slide. So a couple things going on there since... 2019, on a lot of our properties, we've tried to, you know, start planting a lot of trees because a lot of our trees on county property, just like everywhere else in the county, are dying uh, due to the emerald ash borer. So uh, we've been able to partner with uh, LNRP, which is Lakeshore Natural Resource Partnership and Glacierland, and we've planted over 4,500 new trees at, at Gerber Lake. Uh, the previous slide had a picture on. We've had some uh, schools out there. I think Sheboygan Christian High School came out for one event. I think Sheboygan North we've had out there uh, to help plant all these trees. Um, and then in 2022, and then again this year, we did prairie burns on both the North and South Prairie. And the next slide sort of shows why burn. You know, a lot of people ask, well, why, why do you burn a prairie? Um, for one, that mimics what would have naturally happened before human involvement. So pre-settlement, every three to 10 years, prairies would typically burn, you know, lightning or whatnot would hit them. Um, we aim for the middle. So there's no exact science on when you should do it, but a general rule of thumb is every three to 10, and we aim for the middle, every five to seven. DNR used to do them for us, but they can no longer, um, as of about, I think, six or eight years ago, no longer work on uh, non-DNR property, so we have to hire it out now. So, um, But it also combats trees and shrubs that would otherwise shade out the prairie. Uh, it helps combat invasives in a pretty cheap manner. Um, it consumes all the excess fuel that you know builds up over time uh, to prevent wildfire. Um, habitat, uh, some animals and, and plants need fire to survive. Out west, the ponderosa, pri ponderosa pine doesn't re reproduce without fire. It, it needs it to, to, to survive. So. so those are some of the reasons why we burn. Again, this year, you can see the field on the right uh, we did in April. So they go in, they create a fire break. The, the firm that we hire, they mow around 25 feet or so. Well, actually, our crew is Greg's guys mow for us and do a 20-foot um, break around. And then depending on which way the wind is blowing, uh, they start to back burn. You sort of burn into the wind so it doesn't spread super quick. And then they sort of go around the edges, and then eventually it just takes off, and boom, it's done in you know a couple minutes. So it's pretty neat to watch. but. Uh, so again, we every five to seven years, and now that we have to pay for it, it's usually about eight to ten thousand dollars to have them come out. The crews do it. So, all right. And then Marsh Dam, uh, just again show a couple pictures of of what's going on out there. If you haven't been out there, the dam project started about three four weeks ago now. Um, they're going to be the first step was to build coffer dams so they can work in dry conditions, um, but the first step then was to take down the side of the dam they're not working on so it could pass enough water during a heavy rainstorm. Knock on wood, we haven't had that uh, happen yet, but um, so you can see in the, the picture on the left, or my left, maybe you're right, um, that's where they peckered all the concrete out and created a, a, a deeper channel for that water to go through in case upstream there's a, a, um, you know, a high rainfall event. And you can see the coffer dam on the left-hand side of that picture, and that's 
where they're working in, in dry conditions. So they'll build the new dam in halves. Um, like I said, a couple weeks ago is when it started. Uh, they have in their contract a substantial completion date of uh, December. Uh, knock on wood, no major hiccups yet. Uh, Lunda is the, the firm that won the bid. Um, we had about five bids come in, and three were pretty competitive, and the other two were flyers. You know, They put in a, a huge number, and if they got it, they got it, but they weren't very competitive. All in is about three to three and a half, $3.3 million project. And then it's a good partnership. It's uh, the county, state, uh, through the DNR, Ducks Unlimited, the local conservation association, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and then a bunch of private, uh, and a lot of them are anonymous, came in as well, donations to make this happen. And again, you can see some more pictures. Um, you can see them using the, the hammer over on the right to get rid of the concrete. On the left there, you can see the temporary coffer dam, and that was when they breached it to send the water through. And then the drone footage is actually from earlier today. You can see the marsh is starting to draw down, um, and which we've been trying to do since 2017, but it's been too wet to do. So uh, from a habitat standpoint, that'll, that'll be good for the marsh. That's what I have for you this evening. Any questions? All right. Thank you. Next is public addresses. There are none. Letters, communications, and announcements. There are none of those either. And county administrator's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I don't know if my presentation will be quite as interesting as Aaron's. I should have gone first. <laughs> Um, but number of things to report to the board this evening. Um, first, I uh, want to thank Aaron for coming tonight and giving those updates on a couple of the programs that his department oversees. I hope you all enjoy seeing some of the pictures and uh, learning what he and his staff have been working on. Um, the first item I want to cover is just a quick overview of one of the items in your packet for this evening related to ordinance number one, which is amending chapter 46. Um, if any of you have um, reviewed that ahead of time, you'll see there's quite a bit of redlining there, so I wanted to just take a minute to cover those changes. And um, there's two main components to this um, ordinance. The first is related to the highway commissioner appointment. And we started modifying Chapter 46 as it relates to our hiring process, and at that time discovered that the highway commissioner language was inadvertently removed a number of years ago, and it's a good thing we took this up now with Greg's pending departure. So the timing is excellent. Um, so Greg was hired in 2006, and at that time it was changed from a two-year appointment to an indefinite appointment. And so you'll see that in the language. And then shortly thereafter, the county administrator position was created from the county administrative coordinator position. So the proposal before you tonight is re-adding the language that was inadvertently removed, and then also confirming that the highway commissioner, which is what we call here in Sheboygan County the transportation director, that that appointment is by the county administrator instead of the board, like all the other non-elected department heads. So I just wanted to confirm that portion of the ordinance. And then the second portion is related to our hiring process. And this is to hopefully address some of the ongoing challenges that we have with the tight labor market. And the proposals before you are based on feedback from the department heads. And the hope is that it'll make our process more efficient and timely, and also just to clean up some of the redundancies in the language. So currently, as you know, when a department head wants to fill a vacant position, they need approval from their liaison committee, and in some instances, the HR committee as well. And that creates time constraints when we're trying to fill positions, especially if we don't have a lot of notice when someone is vacating their position. So the proposal is to give the department head's authority to backfill positions after consulting with the HR director on the need that they truly need to backfill that position, that there's a need to have that position filled, and that it was um, already approved as part of their budget. And so then the department heads will routinely report back to their liaison committees on the positions that they are filling. And then, of course, if there are any changes to a position, those would go through the, the normal process of committee approval. 
And so again, we're just hoping that this will help speed up the process and hopefully um, have your support in that tonight. I know the department heads are um, hopeful that this will pass and the, depart um, the HR de department is supportive of this change as well. Uh, next, I want to talk about the handout that's on your desk. Hopefully you all saw this. Um, this is a report coming from Forward Analytics on the fentanyl epidemic written by Dale Knapp from WCA. If you participate in the weekly WCA leadership calls or if you were at leadership forum last week, you heard him briefly talk about this. So I just wanted to point out that the printed version is on your desk for you and hope that you take it home and take uh, some time to review it. There's a lot of great content in there, although I'll admit the statistics included are, are staggering. Um, and I wanna just read um, one statistic for you. And this, Dale did um, touch on this last week, uh, but I thought it was important to um, restate it. So in 2022, the US Drug Enforcement Administration seized more than 50.6 million fentanyl-laced pills which is double the number seized in 2021, and also 10,000 pounds of fentanyl powder. The DEA estimated that these seizures represented more than 379 million potentially deadly doses of fentanyl. And to put that number in context, the entire population of the United States is 332 million. So that means that the amount that they seized in 2022 could have had the impact to wipe out everyone in the United States. So um, I think that is extremely staggering and that there's certainly more information like that in this report. And um, I'm glad that we have the dollars from the opioid settlement coming so that we can address this and try and combat the opioid epidemic here, not only in Sheboygan County, but also throughout the state. So again, just wanted to draw your attention to that report. And speaking of Leadership Forum, uh, I wanna thank everyone who was able to join us last week. If you weren't there, the materials are on your desk for you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to myself or the, the chairman. And I want to thank Greg and Chris for presenting to the board last week on transportation and broadband. And we reviewed all of the comments from the evaluation forums and everything was very positive and the supervisors um, that you all noted that it was beneficial. So we appreciate your feedback and uh, hope you all can join us again next year. There was a request to hear from Corporation Council. So Crystal, you're on the docket for next year. <laughs> she, she called me before and she said, are you sure I don't have to be there? I always have to be there. I said, no, you're off the hook this year. And <laughs> Apparently her, her presence was missed, so start planning for next year, Crystal. <laughs> um, and then I wanted to also just touch on the shared revenue uh, bill. So Dale Knapp from WCA joined us last week and, and covered this in depth, so I won't go into great detail, but wanted to just touch on a couple of points. Um, certainly the news from today. Uh, you can go ahead, Cheryl. So. Not sure if you um, recognize any faces in this picture, uh, but we had someone from Sheboygan County uh, representing us today at the bill signing in Wausau. So Supervisor Tom Wagner was able to um, make it there today to uh, accompany other county, uh, Wisconsin County Association board members as well as county execs, administrators, and a number of uh, representatives from the legislature and leadership at the um, from the Capitol there. So we're very glad that that was signed today. If you could go to the next slide, please. So just a couple of super quick highlights. Um, this is now going to be referred to as the 2023 Wisconsin Act 12, no longer the shared revenue bill. Um, so it has an official name now. And as a reminder, it is allocating 20% of the sales tax to the counties and municipalities and the um, aid that we will receive from this will continue to grow as the state sales tax grows. And since the state sales tax has been in place since 1964, there have only been two years where there were declines in that. So one of the uh, most positive components of this is that it will have, uh, it'll be a sustainable revenue source and continue to grow as the sales tax grows. And Sheboygan County currently receives about 1.87 million from shared revenue, and this will provide a 56% increase. 
which will equate to an additional 1.06 million. So in total, we will be receiving 2.93 million. And then that, of course, will grow as the sales tax grows. Next slide, please. Um, there are some restrictions on it. So this is just a, a high level overview of what those are. So of course, not all, all of those relate to county operations. Some of them are specific um, to municipal, uh, but those are the uh, specific call outs for what the dollars can be used for. And want to just end by thanking the, the legislators, um, specifically Devin Lemahue, who got this across the finish line with bipartisan support. This is gonna have a huge impact on all local units of government across the state. So we're, we're glad that that um, became a reality today. And then finally, I'll just end with a couple of updates on the state budget and some action coming out of the Joint Finance Committee. Uh, they continue to meet and they still have a few areas that are outstanding, um, but a couple of the things that have come out of their meetings, there's some, some small wins for counties, and in the following areas, we know that there will be increases. That includes the land and water conservation, uh, the assistant district attorneys, the victim witness division, veteran services, the ADRC operations, child support administration, GTA, although Greg will tell you it's less than what we had anticipated, and um, similarly, HHS um, joint finance met last week Thursday on a number of provisions related to HHS. And uh, we were a little bit disappointed that it was less than we were expecting for increases in funding for um, APS, which is Adult Protective Services, Crisis, and Birth to Three. So there are some small increases being proposed, but we were hoping for um, larger increases, especially as it relates to crisis to help combat um, mental health. So we will continue to be monitoring the action coming from the joint finance and then calculating what that might mean for Sheboygan County, but we of course won't be building any of that into our budget until the, the state's budget is final, approved, and signed. So certainly more to come on that topic, but thus far we are seeing some uh, modest increases in a number of areas, so we're grateful for that. And thank you for all the work that you've been doing with contacting your legislators and certainly um, voicing your concerns at leg legislative breakfast to let them know what's important to us here in Sheboygan County. Thank you. Next is consideration of committee reports, executive committee. Ordinance number one, amending chapter 46 of the County Code of Ordinances, committee recommendation to enact. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I move to enact. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Brower. Thank you, Mr. Chair, I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Brower. Under discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote. That is approved unanimously. Ordinance two. Ordinance number two, amending chapter 12, Emergency Medical Services Council Committee recommendation to enact. Supervisor Brower. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will confirm with that motion. Supervisor Wagner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Wagner. Under discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote. That passed unanimously. Next is the committee report. Uh, 2022 to 2023 per diem report, committee recommendation to concur. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to concur with the report. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Brower. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Brower. Under discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote. That passes unanimously. Consideration of committee reports, ordinance number three. Establishing speed zone on county roads A and J, town of Rhine. Supervisor Wagner. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move for approval of ordinance number three. Thank you, Supervisor Wagner. Supervisor Brower. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Brower. Under discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote. That passes unanimously. All right, I shall turn the gavel over to the Vice Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This month we have uh, three to report on resolution number two from the Executive Committee. Approving the use of American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA funds number seven. Thank you, that'll be referred to finance. Resolution number three from Finance Committee. Approving standard intergovernmental agreement for 2024 county sales tax revenue sharing. Thank you, that'll be referred to the Executive Committee. Resolution number four from Transportation. Approving the purchase of assets from Burroughs Aviation LLC to provide fixed base operator services at the Sheboygan County Memorial Airport. Thank you, that'll also be referred to the Executive Committee. With business concluded, I'd like to uh, entertain a motion for adjournment. Chairman Distruti, former chairman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. I move to adjourn. And is there a second? Supervisor Brower. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. I will second that motion. Thank you. Please vote. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.